and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Simic Merfolk, which is up next on our Throwback Thursday streams. That's right, Throws Throwback Thursday is my favorite day of the week. This is where we take rares and mythics that didn't get to see very much standard play, and they're rotating out of standard, and build decks around them before they go. Um, right, a little bit ago, we, we played we played a Weatherlight deck with Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, and just regular Weatherlight. Um, we're going to be going an Oath of Teferi deck up next with Kamal's Juridic Vow. And after that, we got a Sarkin Unsealing deck. There's been a lot of really good Throwback Thursday decks. If you're watching this later on YouTube, make sure you check out the playlist with all of them. Uh, but, but for now, we're going to be playing a Merfolk deck. This is by Popular Demand. <clears throat> People wanted to see a Merfolk deck one last time before rotation. The last two sets have not really had hardly any Merfolks. If you look at like War of the Spark, just had this Skydiver. And um, M20 only had the two-mana blue flash creature, the, the Cutthroat, Brineborn Cutthroat. And that's it. There's not Merfolk. So, like, M20 had a bunch of dinosaurs and vampires to help those tribes, but did not help Merfolk at all. So that's kind of disappointing. Um, so we're, you know, we're basically playing a Merfolk deck that... So, like, that's why you can tell. Like, there's not very much from the, the past two sets. I am going to be going with the Skydiver from this set and then i was thinking like how how were we really like you know we have like a bunch of like little one and two mana creatures but like how are we like really winning like later games how are we getting through board stalls and everything and i felt like vivian arcbow ranger would be like the best card for the job the counters the plus one plus one counters work pretty well in the deck you know we have uh plus one plus one counter synergies whether it's like skydiver being able to proliferate um putting counters on the benthic biomancer let us draw a card then discard a card we have the hadana's climb also to help get us there um so you know that the counters help us out but however playing vivian is tough though with triple green so i wanted i was going to be playing um the unclaimed territories thought they would work just fine in this deck but going with temple of mystery instead because of vivian costing triple green uh, wanted to have a lot of green sources as you can tell here we got 18 hoping that's enough um but yeah, so that does make our mana worse because Temple of Mystery isn't really a great land for this deck that's trying to curve out early, be, being aggressive. You know, going one, two, three. Um, but that's what we got. Also, board stalls. We're playing some sleeps in the sideboard to get through as well. I got like a random Ceratops in here just to hang out, I guess. Uh, you know, do some attacking. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of what our deck's about. We'll see how it goes. Let's see how good Vivian is and everything. And here we go. Simic Merfolk. So with our Throwback Thursday decks, we we go to we play a league, see if we can get to five wins before we hit two losses, see how many wins we can get. As you can tell with the Weatherlight deck, we got two wins before two losses. So, you know, we were two and one at one point. All right, so, uh, Bandroid, what was that last song? Ask that question. Like this song right here? Yeah, we're not, I'm not building, yeah, like, tons of stuff rotates out here. Like, almost our whole deck rotates out. Sorry, Hawkeye, you're in the way. Hopefully this is the last. This is the one that you met, Bandroid. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Parappa. I was gonna do that, but yeah, Parappa's got you. No, I don't think we can keep this. I mean, we do have three. I don't know. Maybe we can. We do have three one drops. We're on the draw. Twenty-two land deck. Okay. There you go. We did it. Mm -hmm. 
We did it. Please don't use some kind of sweeper that kills all my stuff. Darn. Good sign. Morgok had once upon a time to smooth out their draws. Um. Hey, wizard. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why my opponent played the main phase chemistry's insight. So I mean, I could play more spell pierces and negates here. I mean, so like my anti control stuff is like Spell Pierce, Negate, Shaper Sanctuary, Veil of Summer, Shifting Ceratops. That is kind of a lot of cards, though. And then, you know, like to bring in all that kind of stuff, we'd have to cut a lot of creatures. It does seem like Hadana's Climb is not as good. Let's play. No, I, I don't really have any idea what they're playing. I, I just know they're playing Chemistry's Insight. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I think I want the negates and the spell pierce. Though, and maybe honestly maybe these shaper sanctuaries and then let's just cut some two drop. Um Actually, a kumena. One kumena and then some two drops. I think are elites. Actually, in one jade, jade bear, actually. Let's do that. There we go. Yeah, so they were Esper colors. But look looks to be pretty hard control if they're going Chemisters in sight. But who knows? Maybe not. Yeah, I can't, it's got to be a control deck, right? An Esper mana base with Chemistry's Insight. It's got to be. So I want the Breeding Pool in play for being an island to pump Kumena Speaker. That's not spectacular. Why is our 22 land deck only lands? So I need an additional Merfolk. I need a Merfolk to reveal from my hand to be able to play this over Go Adept. Let's That's not so bad. They bounce it. I get to play Adept. Sorry, they didn't bounce it. I've got time. Hey, that was uncalled for. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. We're, we're already at like 40% of our lands. <laughs> I think now it is actually exactly 40% of our lands that we've gone through. Nine out of 22, I don't know. Because we know we had the, the land down at the bottom. Trust me, I have a plan. Yeah, my opponent's playing a budget mana base. But, you know, you, sometimes you curve out with the budget mana base. That happens.
<laughs> Easy fix, just got 40% of the lands. Spectral Sailor. Not really expecting Spectral Sailor, but it's in there. Already draws a card. Yeah, Biomancer, Vivian, that's a good way to get rid of lands. Every time we put a land or put a counter on Biomancer, we get to draw a card, discard a card. Yeah, we are dodging Walk the Plank. What if that's their removal spell of choice is Walk the Plank? In their three-color deck with a lot of basic islands and planes. Okay, it's probably not the case, but... Don't worry, I got this. If it was, we'd have him. <laughs> yeah, opponent has a strange deck, but they're probably looking at our deck like, man, my opponent has a strange deck. They're playing Merfolk? Who plays Merfolk? Oh yeah, definitely ready for I new Hero's Downfall. Bolos, and I will survive you. Come on, resolve, resolve, resolve. Resolve. Yay. <laughs> Stop Loot away time. another land. I don't know what I'm going to do with Spell... Wait, I guess... I guess I can't do anything with Spell Pierce. I'm going to say I don't know what I'm going to do with Spell Pierce, but now I realize I can't actually do anything with Spell Pierce because it's fairy. Yeah, new hero down Hero's Downfall is going to be good for sure. You know, you just get a free creature attached to it also. That would have been nice to Spell Pierce that. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> you were lucky to get that close. No, of course no. Of course I'm not excited for the Core 2021 Teferi Tribal. Not excited about that at all. If I were you. Hmm. No, I am not making this up as I go. Well, I am expecting, I'm expecting, like, if, so if that's the case, just like there was Chandra's regulator that made activating Chandra's very beneficial, I'm expecting there to be some kind of card similar to that for Teferi's, Back to and the Teferi does not need any help with any spell like that. K 
Keeping this land in hand because we could draw another Benthic Biomancer that loots it away. Even though realistically it could have conceded the last turn. They Legion's End my creature. This game is over. We're just seeing some more of their deck. I'll protect you. Well, yeah. Wizards didn't print any Merfolk the last two sets. Like, well, there's there's one Merfolk in each of the last two sets, and just the rest of the sets were really really powerful. And so yeah, but they just left Merfolk behind in the last two sets, where you know they printed new dinosaurs and vampires. And really good cards like that, but uh, not Merfolk. Hey, Matter. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there. All right, so I think I do want Shifting Ceratops from everything we saw. Not so sure about all the, like, Obviously, three mana to fairy is just a huge problem when it comes to spell pierces and negates, of course. No, sleep's not going to help, help us win this. Same, same kind of thing with Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer also, with Teferi in play, uh, you know, doesn't do anything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim one spell pierce. With the game going longer. Yeah, that's fine. All right, plan is turn one Kumena Speaker. Turn two Double Sanctuary. Turn three, have negate for Teferi. So if they if they do have Thought Erasure, they do get to take negate. They had duress last game. Could just be playing duress again. All right, actually, I'm gonna hold up spell pierce for thought erasure instead of playing the other sanctuary. Now, you know, now that we drew the spell pierce, or you know, legion's end even. So plan changed. All right, now if you want to target Kumena Speaker, it'll cost you. Yeah, I saw the, the new... Thoughtseize kind of card. Um, I think it's... I think it's definitely worse than Thought Erasure. By quite a ways. I feel like I feel like it's more of a cyborg card against decks with black more than a main deck card, but depends on, you know, just like the... the rest of the deck, but just in a, in a regular good stuff deck.
I can't imagine they have too many sweepers. So, hoping for not more sweepers. Unfortunate. I can no longer stand by and watch. That's more like it. Still unfortunate. We didn't see any sweepers the first two games. You know, so a good amount of creatures. Yeah, spell pierce super dead. Ugh. Looks like they have command the dread horde. That's just also really rough. That yeah, looks like two games in a row. Wow. They took nine power worth of stuff and they're at nine. I was gonna say that I was gonna say that was two games in a row where Teferi shut down our our spell pierce from countering a key spell. You know, like we would have been able to spell, spell pierce the enter the god eternal the instant speed and enter the god eternal's game two, and then of course that command the dread horde. Yeah, so Iggy Boo, um, plan, I'm planning on doing that tomorrow. I uh, was, not, was not able to do it. I spent a, a while today trying to get like the all the sound stuff working again. Um, and finally got that working and then, it, and then built these four decks. So I, I didn't have time to make that. Um, the sideboard guide with uh, Soul Tide Treachery. So should be should do it tomorrow. And have that up on YouTube tomorrow. Yuck. Risen Reef's really good. Yep, Terminal Land War Elf on the play has still never been beaten. Still never has. Okay, well that wasn't the best turn. So I am willing to trade Dread, 
Don't really need to go to three with these. I'm willing to trade Dread Deep Root, not Dread, Deep Root Elite for the Land War Elf and Risen Reef. That was a trade I was willing to make. All right, that's up there. Okay, so we got to get through a Cavalier of Thorns. Probably starts with Kumena. They have mass manipulation. I don't know, maybe. I hope not. All right, loading up on Kumena because we can make Kumena unblockable. Tap another Merfolk. Kumena is unblockable. Oh, just because they grab blue lands off of Cavalier. I mean, that's fine. I mean, they have, like, all these land war elves and stuff. Like, the blue lands are probably just more valuable. It was, so it was one... I mean, they, so they made one decision with Cavalier, right? Because it was just one trigger. They just went Hydra for zero? What? What was that about? Civilization has crept too far. Tear it down. <laughs> Stomping time. The problem, of course, with tapping another... Um... Tapping another merfolk here is then we don't have the five merfolk to put counters on everything. That end step. I, I don't know why my opponent played that Hydra. I don't know. They, I don't know. I did not have lethal on, on the battlefield. All right. The Kumena, Vivian combo. So this is where Sleep and Ether Gust can be nice. I don't want Negate. I do want Sleeps. Do I actually want Ether Gust, though, in this matchup? Maybe not. I think I may just go with this. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling this right here. Either Gust more for the red matchup. Taking out the Hedonis Climb because they do have the Cavalier of Thorns that has Reach, so flying over isn't as valuable when they have Reach. Good spot for Temple of Mystery. Uh, I mean, this is a good two drop, but we already have a lot of good two drops. Do I just keep another good two drop? Maybe I do, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it reminds you of the arena pre context. No, arena, or sorry, sorry. Uh, Turn one land war off is still never going to be. 
<laughs> Still don't think it has. Could really use land number four where we get to double spell and everything. Crisis. Cool. I think I just Kumena this turn. You know, just using my mana good. Mana, using my mana good. Don't believe that's proper terminology. But you never know. Maybe it is. The Tyrant of Araska. Let them block. I'm gonna draw a card here. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Gingerbread the creature food. That's pretty good. I will protect the virtue of this. Hey good brother, big fan of the fish. We're trying to get there. Good old little fishies. Jarl Axel with the Twitch Prime sub saying, Love your content. Do I love your support? Thanks, Jarl Axel. Glad you're enjoying the content. Um, whoa. Merfolk Skydiver, huh? Is that something I want to be doing? No, we just go Mistbinder. This gets to kill Nissa. All right, got to update the sub goal. Let me set sub goal number eight. Yeah, what do you think about I splashing black for your rock because of these ETB effects? I think that's kind of just too slow. This isn't really a play of, like, one, we're not really trying to play five drops. Like, we have 22 lands, but we're not really, like, a wait till we play a five drop and then play your rock, and then we have other ETB effects afterwards. That's, it's just too slow for this deck. You know, this is a matchup like where our opponent's not really playing removal. Hmm. Is this lethal? Ten. Yeah, should be lethal. As long as this resolves. Okay, not lethal anymore. Not lethal anymore. Right, wait, well, maybe it is. Let's put it on top. This is three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 16. No, we had 16 damage. All right, the merfolk. Getting there. No, you have to pay five mana to, to proliferate with that. Uh, 
with that flying merfolk. And of course, we did not have five mana left, but we just got three counters. <laughs> Fish are friends, not food. Yeah, that that uh, that is really nice with the uh, tapping all that mana with sleep there, so they only have like the two forests left. And they don't get blue mana the next turn. Even fought through a couple of ether gusts. So Jade Bearer is the worst one drop to just play because it doesn't do anything. So that'd just be a one one. However, my opponent just played a two one, so a one one does block a two one. <laughs> uh, he's the Legion Zend on a Jade Bear. Got to get your creature through somehow. All right, so we we are like gonna be behind here. I don't know if y'all have seen the Vampire deck. The Vampire deck is really really strong. Our deck is not as good as Vampires. So we're we're gonna if we're gonna win this, we're gonna get really lucky basically. Like, Soren is, like, a much better card than anything we got, for example. That card's really broken. We're kind of doing a similar thing, but they're doing it a lot better. We're doing okay at the staring contest here. Wow. That was an aggressive attack. That's a good card. So making the Silver Girl adapt to 3-2 so it can block Knight of the Ebon Legion and force them to spend their mana to keep Knight of the Ebon Legion alive. And now we have Vivian that can minus and kill the knight. Yeah. My heart beats in unison with the wild. We are actually doing it. Chomp. And their claws, you're done. All right. We got game one. We got game one. We just need to get pretty lucky again and them not have any Sorens or anything like that again for these other games. So I think this is a time to cast some sleeps. Feels like it probably is. Yeah, it's kind of, I guess, sideboard like we did the last match. We'll take out the spell pierces and a climb and bring in some sleeps. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, Matthew. That was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> okay. We can kind of deal with this. Temple of Mystery not looking so great here.
All right, well, their deck <clears throat> is doing its thing, though. Now here. I mean, our deck's kind of doing our thing, too. But they're on the play. And their deck's faster. It's a good sleep draw. We can play Temple. Skydiver. Get a couple of counters. On some stuff. Try not to die before we get to sleep. Or I could just go Mist Binder. Gosh, their stuff hits so hard. I'm already thinking I need to like chump this knight. So we change our lands out where we don't need to shock next turn. If I don't block Knight, they can put us down to one. I think I block a Danto Vanguard, honestly. It's all it's all good, open minded. Yeah, it's a really good hand. We're just casting this not to die, basically. That's not a good way to be casting sleep. Just to just to not die. All right, well, we get to be on the play this time. Really hoping my opponent does not have Knight into a Danto Vanguard. Again, really hoping they don't have that start. I have to hope they don't have those, and I have to hope they don't have turn three Soren. Temple not helping. Drats. I have turn one night. Please not a Danto Vanguard on two or Soren on three. Ugh, that's also not good. Their deck just is just doing the same stuff but better than us. And my removal spell is sleep. Like Legion said, just miles better than sleep.
Well, Adept's good, especially if we find another Merfolk. Okay, well... Their hand was loaded. Good turn for us, but it's not like defeat Soren good. This is but a taste of my power. This is probably why Vampires is one of the top deck in the metagames and nobody's played Merfolk in months. All these M20 I will not. cards that are awesome. There was a time when Merfolk was more played than vampires. There was a time. Close your eyes, breathe, and listen to the sounds of the wild. My, my, how you've grown. Figured it out. Attack me for nine, sack the knight, do an extra three. Well, we played a competitive match. We we uh, we had our opponent not draw very good that game one, and so we got to win the game one. But games two and three, sleep looked pretty awful. Um, we weren't just we just weren't able to keep stuff around. I just had much much better. Much more efficient removal, um, threats, everything. Soren, unbeatable. All right, new game. Hey, Rackle Guru. I reverted the update. I spent a long time this morning trying to figure out how to fix the all the sound problems we were having, and just it wasn't working at all. And I and then just just decided to try to revert the update and did that and it worked. Yeah, Deeper Waters is fine, but that's about it. 1-1 one, one tokens aren't really that valuable and it's so slow. Hmm. 
Sorry, that's like just like yesterday. There was like yesterday there was like a, a gnat that came on the microphone and there's another one there. It just landed right on it. Just came out of nowhere to be there on the microphone. Am I expecting a sweeper from the double Swiftwater cliff decks? Because I don't think so. Obviously, they could have Flame Sweep or Pirate Clasm next turn, and that'd be really bad for me. But I'm not expecting that. I guess they did have Pyroclasm. We do need three green sources anyway for Vivian. I'll just play that other breeding pool. Just have it in there. Could be a little awkward. We draw a spell. We don't get to really loot. Do that good of looting with the, Bio the Biomancer. Miss Binder is a good draw. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I've, I'm a scaredy cat. I've never liked haunted houses, um, or really anything. I don't like scary movies or anything like that. I'm. I don't. I don't enjoy being scared. It's not an experience that. I want to happen. So yeah, our opponent did have the turn three sweeper, and we still we're still putting up some good pressure here. Would love to draw Vivian. That'd be the best. Punk boy R D. Dang, that's not a Vivian. That's not the best. With the resub, thank you so much. All right, looks like our opponent scooped it up. Cause yeah, even if they have, even if they had instant instant speed removal for like the mist binder and blocked the bigger creature, they were still taking five damage. I think. No, maybe they weren't. I don't know. I guess whatever they had wasn't good enough. This seems like a pretty good ether gust matchup. Definitely a good Shaper Sanctuary matchup. Because they should have a whole bunch of, of burn spells. You know, a bunch of shocks and and lightning strikes and stuff like that. Not as good Had Hadana's Climb matchup. Maybe either Gus isn't really worth it. I'm not sure. We'll play him. Hey, what's up, Blind? Blind's also getting that resub number 10 on the day. That's a sub goal. What we do with the sub goals is we put them, mark them down, put them towards the next 12 hour stream. And let's see where we're at. I think we're at 11. Yep, so that'll be number 12. So I do a, a 12 hour stream every 20 sub goals. Yep, so and that's number 12 out of 20. Ah. Uh, I had the sound on there. I can deal with this. Yeah, start with the sanctuary. Not going to let them bolt stuff. Yeah, reprinted Sorcerer Spyglass. So yeah, there you go. Crafted two copies for Mono Black a few weeks ago. Not going to waste. 
Nice, yeah, I still use my quick, quick toothbrush. You know, multiple times a day, I still get like the refills and everything. It is really nice. Wouldn't mind a green source where we get to double spell. It doesn't look like we're getting it though. Honestly, that's a bad deeper elite there. I should put it on the mist binder because if they just play the the sweeper, they kill both my creatures now. I should put it on the mist binder. Hopefully we don't get too punished. Hopefully they don't sweeper. Okay, good. No sweeper. Where's our green sources deck? Well, Sanctuary, Sanctuary is doing its job. It's been Divination so far for one mana. There we go, green source. Love it. Again, pump it up Mistbinder so that it doesn't die if there's the sweeper. Um, yeah, I've, I've never been invited to one, Guru. Uh, that thing's still tough. Well, our Shaper Sanctuary did a good job. But... They had the Sweeper. And they got rid of my Flying Blocker. I think I liked our plan. Let's run it back. I could just play like negates instead of ether gus. But I think I like the ether gus still. Frilled Mystic was still Ravnica Allegiance. That wasn't the last two sets. The last two sets were the Spark and M20. They didn't print Merfolk. They had um Oh, yeah, good call, Seb. I can delete that command now. War of the Spark, this was like the only Merfolk. And then M20 had Brineborn, Cutthroat, and Augurabolos, technically. Augurabolos, of course, doesn't really fit here. Um... I'm gonna go skydiver first.
Hey, Maximus. Well, and the coddle does hit pretty hard. Ugh, didn't get the land. Mostly I want land, not not necessarily for double spelling. Really just to get to, to Arc Bow Ranger. I want to just play Arc Bow Ranger on four. My worst possible scenario is they have Lava Coil plus Shock. Ooh, they're coiling that card. Not the speaker. All right, there's a land. Get another land. Ugh. It's not a land, but deep, deep root elite. It's a really good card. If I keep elite. We play elite and speaker next turn. Nah. All right, jumping with the terrymander. This is Goldfinger by Superman, or Superman by Goldfinger, sorry. Yeah, from Tony Hawk Pro Skater on PS1. We're getting there. We're almost there. Ugh, can't draw this land to finish this off. Okay. So if I attack out. They can have Enigma Drake, block Merfolk Mist Binder, jump block Kumena Speaker, take three. So we trade Mist Binder for Terramander, and they go to one. Yeah, that's the thing to do. Oh yeah, the yeah the matches went went uh, really good or went okay. Yeah, they went pretty good with with Jeskai Weatherlight. But yeah, it was fun to play. Um, because yeah, we had Weatherlight plus we had the Weatherlight Captain as well. Joyra Weatherlight Captain. So it was definitely a fun deck to play. Surprised they played the land first before the Charter Course because maybe they want to discard that land. We didn't even get to play our Vivian. It was going to win us the game. Because all of our creatures won the game anyway. All right, Merfolk's doing good for us. We're three and one. Just losing to the better tribal deck with vampires. But yeah, we're doing good. This is an awkward Temple of Mystery Hand, but I think the play is... Hmm. Alright, I think our play is Deep Root Elite on two. 
followed by deep root elite on three, followed by a bunch of spells that get a whole bunch of counters on stuff. After that. Bag of holding. Bag of holding. Taking a little bit, but we're going to have a, a good fourth turn. Um, assuming my opponent doesn't kill me. Oh, no. Well, GG. There's just actual game over. Ugh. Hey, that's awesome, Rakuguru. Good job. Hey, Sebos. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're just actually dead. Ferocidon. Um, yeah, everything's going good. Hawkeye's doing good. He's he's just laying down, taking a nap. I guess he's, like, right behind the table here on the couch. He's back there. So it looks like our downfall are the other tribal decks. You know, dinosaurs, vampires. They just go a little bigger than us. Sleep just looked so bad last time. I play Ether Gust. Like, so I want to play Ether Gust. Maybe we go to sleep. Um, climb does seem pretty good in this matchup to fly over the top. Hmm. Guess I'm gonna trim skydivers. I want the other two drops, and that's like the spot to trim is is two drop. Man, these temples are just killing us again. We have all tap lands here. It's not really a mulligan though. It's just all tap lands. Hey Morgan. How's everything going? Everything's just same old, same old over here. Alright, keeping the land. And so it turns up all these things into being untapped. Let's lead with the Silvergill Adept. There you go. Well, yeah, thanks, thanks for stopping by saying hi. Huntmaster. Let's see. How do we want to do this? Let's go Skydiver. 
counter. Jade bearer counter over here. Get to attack for three. And have that flyer there. Um, yeah, so we only played the, so just the two decks here today. Um, I'd say I probably enjoy the Weatherlight deck more than this deck. For just like my, my own play style and stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, I like them all though. Um, I'm excited about playing the, the Bant Oath deck. It's going to be a lot of... Uh, Planeswalker activations there. And they just had to unban Ferocidon to kill Merfolk. Thought Merfolk was too powerful, huh? Ooh. Ferocidon's out of here. I'll take it. I'll take it. Down, they're just down to one card left. Busting heads is my bread and butter. Hmm. Protection from blue. I cannot block that. Um. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We did it. We got a game. All right, winning game three on the draw is gonna be really tough. But three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We did it though. We got one game. I'm glad they didn't just like minus their Domri and kill my mist binder. Sleep looks really slow. Oh, well, we're trying it. Here we go. Can we get lucky in game three against a better deck on the play? Well, not a bad hand. Stop. Well, they have the best two drop in their deck. Oh, looks like we're not getting lucky. Alright, so slowing them down. You know, not giving it not giving them like the free mana and like not taking the four damage from Marauding Raptor and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I am gonna love tearing this place to the ground. Dump. 
Shopping time. Uh, should you re yeah, you should probably play Land War Elves in your Gruul Dino deck instead of Raging Raptors. Yeah. All right, their hand was loaded. So much for her. <laughs> we need them to not have a loaded hand. Their hand was really loaded. I'm like one mana short. Um, like one mana and one damage short. If I had one more mana, I could do 12 next turn. Thank you so much, Vitellius. Thank you so much. I don't have any creatures in my sideboard to like go grab that save me. If I had one more man, I could do 12 damage to them. But I don't. I mean, it just doesn't matter what we do. I could... It, just, it doesn't matter. Like I could, like, get you know, get this way. counter on, flip the Hadana's Climb, make it a 4-4, four, four, and then uh, have the Vivian kill, like, the Rampaging Ferocid on. But, you know, like, it doesn't matter. Games are going pretty good today. It's Thursday. Thursday is my favorite day. So yeah, with with one more mana, we would we could have made a twelve twelve here, but they're at thirteen. All right, three and two with the Merfolk. Not a bad showing at all. Not a bad showing at all. We were just defeated by the other Ixalan tribes. Vampires and dinosaurs. Both those tribes are just more powerful than Merfolk. That's just how it is. Uh, both those tribes have been gaining more cards. You know, like Marauding Raptor and Rampaging Ferocidon there. Um, you know, they didn't, they didn't even have the Rotting Raptosaur. And then, of course, Vampires getting Knight of the Ebon Legion and Soren. But our deck did pretty well besides that. We didn't get to use Sedana's Climb basically at all. Uh, but Vivian was good for us. Vivian helped us finish out some games. Um, but yeah, we just kind of did our little Merfolk thing. So there we go. Oh, that's also true. We should have lost the first match, but our opponent... I've, you know, that was a while ago. I forgot about that match. But yeah, we probably should have lost that one too. I mean, we knew, I mean, I knew Merfolk is just not, not that good compared to the, the power level of these, these uh, last couple of sets and what standard is right now. Um, this, you know, this deck was a lot more playable uh, after Rivals of Ixalan than what it is now. But we had a lot of people that asked for Merfolk deck, and so we at least played a bunch of respectable games and... With a three and two record, or you know, if we lost that first one, it would have been like two and two, and still not a bad record at all. So, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it, seeing some merfolk, 
And also don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. And leave comments too. I always like seeing some comments. Oh, I didn't say this in the first video. I forgot to say this. But uh, you know, for next Throwback Thursday next week, let me know what decks uh, or what like rares and mythics that are rotating out that we haven't built around yet that you want me to build around. Let me know in the comments. You know, this one is basically like a Kumena deck, I guess. You know, like that's that's what we built around here was Kumena. Uh, we could say that. But yeah, just like how we built around like Weatherlight, like for the other one, Weatherlight, Oath of Teferi, Sarkin's Unsealing. You know, let me know what you want me to build around for next Throwback Thursday. Uh, but that's it here for Simic Morfolk. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.